Hi there, this is Glycon. Glycon is a motion capture system. It uses your VR headset and controllers to perform motion capture that you can use in games and movies and pretty much any kind of digital media. I'm going to walk you through some of the new features in the latest version. And um, yeah, well, let's just get started. So right now I'm wearing a VR headset. I'm actually wearing an Oculus Quest VR headset. And I have uh, my hand controllers here in my hands. If I wanted to, I can create gestures by moving the joysticks around. Or I could even take the hand, control, hand controllers and set them down and put my hands in front of my face. And now it tracks my fingers. And you can get pretty decent uh, results from that. So I want to show you some of the new features in this version. I'm going to grab the controllers again. When you first come into Glycon, one of the first things you're going to want to do is know how to control the HUD, which is the heads up display. Uh, and basically that's the X button on your left controller. And that gives you this. And this is uh, basically the bulk of the user interface for Glycon. You can move it around with your hand as long as you're holding down the X key. And to toggle it, you push the X key on and off. Simple as that. So I'm going to pull it up and then I'm going to move it around a little bit. On my right hand, you'll notice that there's a white ball at the very tip. All I have to do is move that ball through each of these boxes like this. And when I do that, it will go through every option in Glycon. So all of the features are available right here. And you can just scroll through them like this and find anything you're looking for. You can create your own arena and bring it in in a 3D program. You could bring it in. In this case, I've got one that's just a giant round room that I use sometimes when I'm doing a product demonstration. Okay, so this is a green screen basically, but not really green. Um, you can also do the unlimited ground. So this is like a holodeck. And we're going to pop back into the dojo, which is where you start. All right. Um, to recenter this guy, like if he's turned a little bit to the side and you want him to straighten up, you hold down both the X and the A buttons at the same time. And you do that a couple of times and he'll recenter. On the A, on the, on the uh, right hand, by the way, if you hit just the A button, it pulls up the recording controls. And this is a new feature in the latest version that lets you place uh, recording controls in space wherever you want them. And they'll be invisible when you do the recording. And then um, when you're done, basically if you click the little green button right there to start recording, you'll notice it goes countdown there at the top. Three, two, one, now it's recording. And over here we have a little stop button now. And if I hit that, that's gonna stop recording. And I'm gonna do one other thing here. I'm just gonna move my hand like this so yeah, I can show you something cool here in just a second. Okay, so we're going to go over here and hit the stop button. There we go. Now that recording has exported as an FBX file. And if I pull up my big HUD again, I go down here to the last option, you'll see the options. I've got BVH, FBX, and RAW. RAW is a CSV file if you're really curious about the data that's being sent around. FBX is what you'll use most of the time for most games and things like that. And Blender doesn't like text-based FBX files. It does like BVH files. So if you're using Blender, you'll, you'll want to use uh, BVH. And there are a ton of uh, features in here. Um, every time there's an update to Glycon, I usually add one feature or tweak something. In this case, uh, we've actually added an entirely new avatar system that is designed for precision. And the goal behind this new version of Glycon and this version going forward is to create one of the most precise motion capture systems on the planet. Um, so we're going to go through this, though, real quick. Uh, you've got props. You can bring in some props. Like if you wanted to bring in a computer or something like that that you wanted to, to show here, you could. You can also create a virtual set using this. You can create anything. You just, like, here is a desk or something, right? You could do a, a window. So if you wanted to act out a scene in a window, this is all you would have to do. 
And then you can export this as an OBJ file. And when you do that, then you, it'll export this whole, all of this geometry, and you can take that into a 3D program and swap it out with a real window or whatever you want. And this way your animation will fit in with uh, something that you created here kind of on the fly. We're going to erase that now. Easy as that. And now I'm gonna to go to uh, some of the other options here. So here we've got shuffle and hover. Now, since this is an Oculus Quest, it doesn't actually track my feet. So if you don't like the way it's moving around and you're going to replace the lower body with a different animation when you get into a 3D program, then you could just set the hover. And then when I move around, you'll notice that my feet just hover. And that makes it easier to replace later. I'm gonna do shuffle though. It's a little, little more human-like. Okay. And then we have um, all of the avatar settings. Now, one of the cool new things in this, again, I was, I was saying the goal of this version of Glycon is precision. And in order to pull that off, we need to know some precision numbers now. So now you're able to enter your height uh, in centimeters. So, and you can enter any height and it's going to recalibrate everything instantly for that height. So if I wanted to be smaller, I could say 140 centimeters. And now I am this big. And if I wanted to be bigger, I could say uh, 199 centimeters. And now I am this big. And if you'll notice, I'm still um, my height, whatever my height is, but the avatar scale and size is different. So you want to enter, find out your actual height in centimeters and enter it here. And when you do that, uh, this should feel very natural to you. And um, an easy way to test that is to take the controllers and set them down and see if your hands match roughly the size of your hands. That's, it's rough. It's not a precision thing on the hands because, uh, frankly, the size of the hands aren't going to matter. The data that's going to be exported is just the skeleton uh, and the skeleton animation. So we're going to go, um, I'm going to set this back down to something smaller. We're going to go to 160. Okay, and there we are. Now I'm going to go into um, audio. So I can bring in my own audio files that if I wanted to, when I, on my recording controls, you'll notice there's a little speaker and that allows me to play whatever audio file I have here. So if I have some audio file and I don't have any right now, um, then I could play it back or when I hit recording, it will automatically start the beginning of that audio file. And that allows me to sync my motions with an audio file. Like if I was going to do uh, simulate drumming or playing a guitar or dancing or anything like that. We have a number of props. Now the trick about the props is these are just stand-ins. Okay, so they don't, they're not necessarily going to fit perfectly in the hand. They're just to give you, the user, kind of an idea of what, you, what your, your object is going to be if you're trying to do an animation of something. Uh, the rifle and the longsword both work the same way. They have um, a different setup for the hands so that you can have uh, basically control over the elbow and the front hand tracks the, the front of the, the weapon and the back hand is the one that actually controls the orientation of the weapon. Same with the longsword. The right hand controls the actual movement of the weapon. The left hand controls the left elbow allowing you to strike different poses uh, and, and things like that. Here we go, turn that back off. And so here we have uh, different poses. You can stand, stand or sit. Uh, and then this is a new feature. This is the new hand anchors. And the way this works is pretty simple. While this window is open, and it has to be open in order to set these, um, you can use the grip controller on the Oculus Quest to set these in space in, in different places. So for example, if I wanted to show that I was going to um, pull up on a, on a bar up here, or that I was going to hang from a bar with one hand while I'm doing something with the other hand, then I set one of those high, and I can, I can set this one anywhere, it doesn't really matter. And when I pull the trigger on this hand, my hand will go up and, and attached to that position. And if you'll notice, that position stays stationary. So however I move around, my, my hand is going to stay right there or as close as it can get. Okay, so this allows me to very easily 
uh, do something like, let's say that I'm trying to simulate um, I'm in a subway. I mean, I'm in a, <clears throat> a train or subway or something like that. And I've got my hand up on the, uh, on one of the poles there, right? So holding on to that, got my little suitcase here, brief, briefcase in the other hand, and you can go like that. And that allows you to perform tricks like this that normally would require that you had um, a real object to, to act against, that you're doing your mocap against, and you don't have that here. So that's kind of something kind of cool that you can do uh, in this environment that you can't do elsewhere. Another thing is, let's say you had a desk that you wanted to simulate that you are standing up and sitting down from or something like that. You Again, you could put these two flat like this, and then you place your hands there, uh, and your hands are going to be basically on the desk at that position. So let's do the hands out like that. And there we go. So now um, if I'm sitting down, standing up, or whatever, my hands uh, hand positions are going to stay there. And this allows me to, to do things like that. Same with like if I'm driving something. There you go. So the idea behind this is basically to let you um, create the facade, the, the appearance of something that you're actually acting against, like a, a wall here, like I'm putting my hand up against the wall. Um, maybe, maybe I'm trying to push something. So there we go. That's the idea. Uh, we're gonna turn that back off. And the last uh, thing here I'm going to show you is the clone. And the clone is basically a little version of you that will appear. And you can load the last animation you did and play it back. And as you can see here, he's playing it back. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, the simple reason is you might want to act against that. So you might want to do one recording of you doing something and then come back in and do another one where while he's gesturing this way, maybe you're gesturing the other way or something like that. So you can record your own animation while this guy's playing and yeah, basically play multiple characters in one scene. Um, and it's that easy. So that character is just going to play back the last animation that I loaded. And make him go away. And that is it. So those are the new features in the latest version of Glycon. Now, starting in, uh, I think, a couple of versions back, what I started doing was every version that came out had different export features. So this one right here, this is the first high-precision one with the new skeleton, uh, has new bone rotations, new, um, uh, basically, metrics for everything so that the height is correct, the headset height is correct, the arms should be basically correct, and the legs are correct, and everything else. So... Going forward, uh, this is the base, and so this base will export for all major formats, everything from Unreal to Unity to Blender, uh, iClone, Cinema 4D. Every, it should work in everything, but custom versions that make it simpler to export to those different formats will be um, coming out very soon in the next couple of days. So just uh, if you're if you're uh, a user right now, you can go to the download section and grab this version. The PC version will be out uh, very soon. They'll do exactly the same thing, but uh, has complete Steam VR Vive tracking system uh, that allows high precision movements of body parts and tracking. And I'll do another video for that one. And then we're also going to have the same uh, system, but it'll be branded specifically for Blender, or it will be branded for iClone, or for Cinema 4D, or 3DS Max, or Unreal, or Unity, or you get my point. So every major skeleton out there will have a custom version of this that you can download and use that one. And that way it's, it's your exported version is going to work perfect for, for that uh, skeleton. So hopefully this makes sense. I try to make this as simple as possible. Um, every time that we update this, I go, I go through and I look at all of the bug reports and all of the requests from people and I try to add in everything that people have asked for. We've got some really cool stuff on the on the very near horizon that people have been looking forward to for a while. Uh, but I had to get this high precision skeleton system finished in order to do any of the other cool stuff. So 
this version will be live on the server um, tomorrow, uh, which um, I want to say is going to be February 3rd. No, March 3rd. And then um, going forward, we'll have the other skeletons available, hopefully within 24 hours after that. So uh, feel free to go grab this one, play around with it. Let me know what you think. I cannot wait to see what you guys make with it and uh, have a great day. Thanks.